into the show without me, huh? Go ahead, Robin. Do the intro. Hola! Adios! <laughs> what is going on, everyone? Happy Tuesday, and welcome back to Sin City Crypto. My name is David. I'll be one of your co-hosts, and today, like every single weekday, we're coming at you live from our studio here in the heart of Las Vegas, Nevada. Today, Bitcoin will get to 100000 if... Let's see what one of the top hedge fund executives have to say. Also, there is a poll. If you're in the chat, make sure you put in your vote. What do you think it will be? We'll discuss that. We're also going to talk about Japan. We're also going to talk about Saudi Arabia have officially come out and said, we are willing to take anything outside of the U.S. dollar for trade. What does that mean for the economy? What does that mean for crypto? We'll get into that and much, much more. But before... I'd like to introduce you to your backstabbing co-host. Hello, Robin. Hola! It's your boy, Big Rob, back in the house. Welcome to Sin City Crypto. If it's your first time checking us out, we're an entertainment-focused cryptocurrency channel where we take the old, the boring, the stale information, and smack it with a like sign. Now, um, if it's your first time checking us out uh, and you didn't know, we'd like to discuss the price of Bitcoin. Is that $21,291. How you feeling about Bitcoin, baby? Don't call me baby. Boo boo. <laughs> you said you want to do the show without me. Go ahead, bro. Do the show. <laughs> I was well, hurt, Show man. up and uh, I, was I won't hurt. have to uh, remember. This is my kid's you, birthday, all right? Okay. Happy birthday. I'm happy birthday. All right, all jokes aside, um, man, so many good topics I missed yesterday that I'm definitely going to get my input in. Uh, I missed you guys, chat. I hope you missed me as well. Um, so, what would you, you ask me? Uh, no idea. Okay. Oh, you excited about Bitcoin? I'm always excited about Bitcoin, baby. So here's what I'm also excited about. So if you are a millennial, put a one in the chat. Put a one in the chat because here we go. Bitcoin ownership, guess who leads the charge? It is the millennials, which is going to be the green line here. Uh, they're leading the charge, followed by uh, people with incomes over $100,000. Followed by men. We need to get the women up there as well. Followed by Gen Z adults. And coming in the very last, shocker, it's the baby boomers. Um, what are your thoughts on, on this chart, Robin? Uh, a, are you surprised millennials are leading the way? B, are you surprised boomers are the last? How Am, I, as, am I a millennial? I'm not a millennial right now. I'm, a, uh, I'm more like Gen, Gen Z. Millennial, Gen, I believe, stops at 38 or 39. Gen, Gen age, age, age millennial. I'm a millennial. Kyle is a millennial. What generation are you, Rocco? Gen X? I'm a, probably dinosaurs. Dinosaur. <laughs> dinosaur, yes. <laughs> Which dinosaur, though? Uh, the, the, uh, the Paleolithic uh, era. The Paleolithic, yes. <laughs> yeah, there you go, right. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, seriously though, uh, are you surprised that millennials are leading? And number two, people over a hundred because you know the older you get, the the <laughs> less likely you are to adopt new technology. You know, you can't Wrong. teach an old dog new tricks, isn't that what they say? So then, why aren't the Gen Z people up there then? Because they don't have money. <laughs> That's my stuff. You got no. I, I mean, seriously, you gotta you gotta be young enough to not be ignorant to change as i mean let's be real if you it, let's 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 be real if you're 80 years old you're probably not going to start learning how to trade bitcoin right i mean you're probably at this point you're like you know what i'm just gonna i'm gonna mail it i'm gonna enjoy uh enjoy life uh, and my checkbook and uh still licking stamps <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, what the hell? But uh, no, nah, you so you gotta be young enough to where you're excited about emerging technologies. At the same time, you gotta be uh, you know, mature enough to where you have enough experience in the workforce that you could demand a high enough salary that you have some disposable income to invest. And that window probably falls perfectly on the millennials right now, right? That's mm -hmm. they're what thirty five years old, something like that. Something like that. Yeah. So a thirty five year old male, probably at the top of his game, getting some bomb ass salary, and uh, is uh, interested in new technology. That's what it is. Not surprised. Not in the slightest. So no, Robin, not you a, are zero. a Gen X. Gen X. Born between sixty five yeah. and eighty. XRP Armin, stand up, baby. Let's go. Wait, no, you were born <laughs> in eighty three. Gen mind. XRP. How you, you doing? Millennial. 
<laughs> I don't know the dates. All I know is uh, millennials. I'm a millennial, so my group, good job, guys. We are leading the way. And who holds the most Bitcoin in their wallets? Baby boomers, we need to help you guys out. We need to get you up here. Uh, but are you surprised that the number two leading category was people making over 100K? Like Once again, disposable income. But you don't need... You don't need five, yes, ten, yes. twenty thousand dollars. But you can you that you can but but what I, I want people to understand that you don't need like when you want to start buying crypto, you don't oh my god, I don't even have enough money to buy one Ethereum. I don't even have enough money to buy one car, one uh, Bitcoin. Literally figure out what disposable income you have, that what is, percentage of that you're willing to set aside and not think about whether it's twenty five bucks a week or fifty bucks a week. If you do it over a longer time horizon, you're gonna get to that one Bitcoin. You're gonna get to that one Ethereum. Easy to preach, but you know what? If you're working at McDonald's, you're working at Ross or well, you know you need Walmart. A, you need a, you need here's the thing. Here, here's you the need thing. These people don't even have a lot of these people. Just you look at the you look at the working force that doesn't have a savings account. Same same boat. You know you would you would you could just look at investing and just economics. You, how you how you manage your money. Unfortunately, the people that don't make a lot are. Typically, the ones that don't have good money management skills. It's just the fact of the matter, and you know, I, you know, I, there's something to be said for people that you know really appreciate, you know, a hardworking dollar that make a lot of money have made a lot of smart monetary decisions throughout their lifetime, and so it's not that hey, all of a sudden I'm a good worker, I'm good at my career, I've invested in myself you know, with knowledge. And yet that is a hundred percent completely opposite of what I do in my personal life. And I'm reckless with spending. Now, I'm not saying that, that, that fits every, every person. There's always exceptions, but generally speaking, people that are, uh, driven to a level that they've invested in themselves enough to get a high paying job are probably the same people that can manage their money very well. The same can be said for people that mismanage money well, probably don't manage their own personal time very well. They probably don't, they probably don't, uh, you know, put a lot of effort into expanding their own personal knowledge. And when it comes to um, education, uh, your value that you can provide to an employer or starting your own business, people are lazy, bro. I don't know. I mean, I mean, of, don't don't and you? The price of eggs doesn't help. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and here's the but now now what Rocco said. I mean, 100 percent true. The the in the past, you know, you could get by on medium salary and just do some 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 basic money management and be fine. Now the price of everything is so is so out of control. You find yourself in a situation where if you're not excelling. In work, you're gonna fall way behind because everything is so expensive. It's gonna be hard to live. So you gotta make uh, adjustments. You gotta find a roommate. You gotta take a second job. And you know that's that's the the crazy well, scenario. Here's the good news: we live if in. if you're in a spot where you where you have a, a minimum wage job, right, and you need to make more money, there's there's obviously there's a the demand and supply in the jobs market is completely off kilter. You can go find a second job, make some extra money. Whether you want to use that to invest in crypto or not, that's up to you. But I want to uh, I want to read a comment from the chat real quick. So Huffy zero zero said, uh, "Bitcoin break and hold above twenty one five, then the FOMO will come." Uh, I don't think so. What do you think? Do you think I've, if it, it can hold over twenty one five, you think the FOMO will get? I don't think that's a strong enough number in my in my opinion. So what is your um, number then? I think that you think thirty k will bring FOMO back. 25 but here's the thing fomo would fomo would be that people that are outside of crypto are piling in right or people that aren't investing normally would be piling in and so i just think right now with the explosion of ftx is such a bad stain on the reputation for crypto i think that right now no matter what we just need a little bit of time to distance ourselves from that event to get people that are uncomfortable with crypto to be comfortable with it again. And I think it's just uh, you know, a time thing, you know. The same thing, you break up with uh, your girlfriend or boyfriend, uh, you know, you 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 probably need some time before you settle in again. But we know there's people that always rush in. Your boy, how you doing? Yeah. <laughs> For real. 
Before we get into the markets, um, so we we uh, we stopped kind of covering the fear and greed index because it was literally 20, 22, 21, 19. Well, guess what, Robin? It has risen to neutral for the first time in nine months. The Bitcoin fear and, uh, fear and greed index spiked to a state of neutral for the first time in nearly nine months. Uh, now, if you're not familiar with what this is, it tracks multiple segments, including price volatility, social media comments, surveys, and others, to display the momentary investor sentiment towards the leading digital asset being, of course, Bitcoin. The index pointed at 52 yesterday, which was, uh, well, this was from two days ago, so January 15th, meaning it was in neutral territory for the first time since April of last year. Obviously, the main reason for the recent surge could be Bitcoin's price increase. Uh, is there anything else you can think of outside of price increase that might have driven sentiment? Well, I mean, Bitcoin up. Just look. I was looking at this earlier. I mean, just look at this, man. We're at fifty-one, man. You know how long has it been since we we were there? I literally just said April two thousand. I, I, I know, but I'm just saying, like, how long? <laughs> I, I, I'm just. I want to show you a visual representation. Yeah, 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 go ahead. So you know, you know, how long has it been? Yeah, it's. You know, as you said, you know, March, April here. Uh, and so this whole time, you know, the sentiment is has been bad. So maybe uh, maybe the FOMO is ready. I still don't think so. I don't think so either. And I, I guess you could make, I think, I think this more or less represents the Bitcoin enthusiast, right? And the fact that they think they're in the clear and that they're out of, out of the... Uh, you know, out of the choppy waters as far as uh, the contagion spreading. Now, do I think the fear and greed index is a good measure of uh, retail that doesn't have exposure to crypto getting into it? No. So um, I do want to give a little love to the chat, though. First of all, first of all, before I give love to the chat, I'd like to give some shade to the chat uh, because you've only hit the like button 60 times. That is like a 30% ratio. What's going on here, man? Why can't we ever get to like 50%? Because no one likes what you. What do I got to do? What do I got to do to get you to hit this like button? Hmm? Change the way you look. Hmm? Change your face. Hmm? Get a new hmm? personality. You. You. Right here. You. You. Did you hit the like button? I'm pissed. Did you hit it? Asking yourself a question. Thank you. Um, I do want to say uh, I got a couple of olas to give. Uh, so if you are new here. Say hello, so that way I can drop an Ola very back at you. Uh, we got Doc Jed in here. Uh, we also have Jay Pool, uh, Jelston La Lepera, uh, and then uh, Rusty Chucky and um, Crypto Bat. Now uh, we also got St Scott Stegger, Screw It, and I do want to say we got somebody new here, Tanya Clark. Tanya Clark says, Ola, she's having a baby. What? She's having a baby. And shout out to Lucas. Baby, so, uh, baby. There we baby. go. Wait, and she just had a baby or she's literally in the she's hospital She's having right a now? baby. So well, she's she in might, the hospital watching the show Might be right having now. the baby right now. She's watching the show. <laughs> yeah, she got the epidural on her back right now. Like with, with the like, I'm not going to miss. <laughs> oh, triple Rocco. Hey. <laughs> bro, women are machines. Rocco had two babies. Look, there's three of them down there. <laughs> the triplet. So also Johnny C, Ivov, uh, Ivalov, uh, Crypto Non, uh, and uh, <laughs> Hernando Sicko. Hola! Welcome to Sin City Crypto. Oh, you guys actually responded with some like buttons there. We just got like 30 likes. Thank you. Yo, yo. I had to I had to talk directly to, 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 the, to the I had to talk to directly to the viewer. There's still 50, there's still 70 of you that haven't hit it. So mm. maybe they're bots. You know who you are. If you're not a bot, hit the like button. Robin, <laughs> what's the market looking like? Oh man, what is the name the baby like? Ola? <laughs> name the baby Ola, yes, please. If she does, what what would you do for her, Robin? <laughs> if she gonna, names the baby robot. Ola, uh, we'll we'll put the baby on our intro. How about that? We're redesigning our intro. We'll we'll put your babies. Okay, yeah, you gotta nice. like it. But we need visual confirmation. We need a birth certificate. <laughs> All right, getting hilarious. into it. Uh, as we mentioned, uh, Bitcoin's coming in at twenty one. Three three four, also known as twenty one thousand. Uh, now, uh, just to take a glimpse at how we got here. Uh, now, I think over the uh, last seven days, you can see all of the movement, and this is a healthy growth here as we are stepping up without any major pullbacks, also without any gigantic uh, candle wick rallies, uh, which is good for sustained growth. Uh, and then just to take a look at where we're at in the month, uh, 
how long we traded with such little volatility, such little growth at 16,000. Same thing is similar on the three month. This represents the FTX collapse here. This represents the FTX. Uh, we forgot what happened here. And uh, then taking a look at the broader markets, uh, not too much deviation off of uh, the the zero uh, percent here. So Bitcoin's up uh, just 0.9%. Uh, Ethereum up 0.73. Ethereum is getting closer to that $1,600 mark. Uh, something that was this was kind of the normal uh, number that we were at during the uh, the rise of Ethereum during the last uh, bull market. So good to see this healthy growth from it to getting back up to the uh, major sixteen hundred dollar level. Uh, and uh, some of the biggest gainers for today, uh, we have uh, Polkadot up four point four five percent, almost a full five percent on Polkadot, and Avalanche up five percent as well. Uh, that rounds out some of the biggest movers in the top twenty. Uh, taking a look at the top 100, you do have Casper up 18% uh, and Gala up 10%. So uh, some big movement there. Also, uh, Ave, uh, Ave and Helium round out some of the uh, the biggest gainers out of the top 100. And some of the biggest losers, my co-host David. Also, Loopering <laughs> at 90, down 2%. <laughs> and then... And then <laughs> that was unnecessary. And then we got <laughs> Coronas. <laughs> I'm done. David, what you got? <laughs> uh, great. See, and that, he didn't say anything now. What do you want me to say? Just, Give know. him the wop wops. <laughs> yeah, he don't. He won't because Robin's his boy. Uh, all right. <laughs> Bitcoin. I didn't do anything. <laughs> exactly. That's the point, Rocco. Uh, looking at Bitcoin on the weekly. So something kind of cute here uh, that we're taking a look at. Yes, I said cute. Uh, so last week, this is on the weekly. Last week, we saw the biggest weekly candle since the big rally in March that took us from 41 to 47 point, pretty much 49K. And then we saw a complete down tear from 47 all the way down to 21,900. I do have the 200 week moving average plotted here on the weekly, which is sitting right, wouldn't you know it, $25,000, a smidge under. Uh, if you take a look back at historically, Bitcoin has bounced off this 200-week moving average uh, even during uh, bear markets. And so we haven't seen that this bear market would actually shot. We saw it break below, get rejected, and then just trade sideways and break down. Now, will we break this 200-week moving average? What's more important than getting above this line is getting above it, retesting it as support, and then taking off again. If that does happen, I would expect 30K to be coming very soon. Now, going to the daily chart. I'm going to take off the... So you um, think if we break the 200 a week, we'll... Uh, 30, 30 If K? we break 200 and we come back down and we build support on top of it, we should see 30,000. Okay. We should see 30,000. So we'll see. All right. Bitcoin, obviously, uh, Tim talked about this yesterday. I guess you can call this a massive cup and handle. This is on the daily, but if that's to be true and this is going to play out, we are going to see a, uh, the handle hasn't formed yet. So that should slope down this way. Will we get down to 19 K? Will it come all the way down to, let's just say 18, five or whatever. If this thing does break out, if it does form a cup and handle and, uh, the handle comes and it breaks out, we're looking at, uh, and you can estimate a gain of about 20% for the price of Bitcoin, which if we just, uh, just these are of course just assumptions. If we take uh, the breakout point, let's just say it dips back down to 19.5, 20% Bitcoin would put us, guess what? Right around that 200 day or 200 week moving average. I like to throw on the Ichimoku cloud just to kind of get an overview of the trend and where we're going. So all things positive on Ichimoku, you have the cloud green, great, price above cloud, this is great. Lagging indicator and the conversion and baseline are right where they need to be. Um, I'm going to take this off and kind of put on the Fibonacci retracement so we can kind of take a guess. All right, this thing's been ripping, right? This is on the daily. We had one small blip here. Uh, other than that, we've had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, eight out of the nine last candles have been green. Of course, guys, nothing goes up forever. If we take the move from down here back at the very end of December, which is at 16.3, move it up to where we're currently at now. Some levels I'd be looking out for, the 38 level, which is 19,500. 
which would put us right in the area of where we consolidated here back in October of last year. And then the 50 level as well, same thing. So you're looking at 18.9 and 19.5 if we break below 20,000, but I believe 20,000 uh, should be a strong level of support. It is a big psychological number. And uh, you would expect buyers to hop in or to, to come in at 20,000. There's been over $500 million in crypto liquidated in the last like 48 hours and um, um big what? big big shout out my boy jimmy jimmy guess let what me he guess. did let me guess let me guess gifted membership that's right jimmy <laughs> the hype <laughs> man of sensitive crypto that's right baby uh give a like button for our boy uh, jimmy jimmy here see how i'm uh dude just does doing. not stop that's right uh and then uh, also, we're at 211 viewers, so uh, we're pretty close to our club limit. Today's club limit was brought to you by uh, Las Vegas Athletic Club, our local gym here. Uh, it, no, actually, they were not. <laughs> don't give them free marketing. They haven't. They don't sponsor us. Uh, that's, you just, man, you don't go to the gym. That's all. Uh, so uh, 250 is our club limit. So almost there. 30-something people away. Okay. All right. I want to take a gander at, you mentioned Gala. Uh, I don't know why people will call it that, but Did it's you Gala. Say Gala. Gala. I heard someone say Gala. Hey, have you heard of the Gala crypto? I'm I like, thought you were going to say like Gaja. No, Gala, Gala, Gala. So Gala. Aluminium. Galaminium. Yeah. Uh, guys, we have, if you're a Gala fan, first and foremost, put a one in the chat if you are a Gala fan, if you hold Gala, if you like Gala, if you're intrigued by Gala. We have the man himself joining us on Thursday. At 11.30 Pacific Standard Time. Gala's joining us? Gala is joining us. Like the man? The chief marketing officer, Ooh. Bitbender himself, will be joining us. We're going to talk all things Gala. Hey, maybe, just maybe, if you're watching this show, especially after the fact, comment a question you would like us to ask the Gala team. And maybe, just maybe, we will ask it. All right, so Robin did mention Gala is pumping on the one hour. So we are in a rising wedge pattern, which typically does break to the downside. But what I want to show more than that is I want to swap over to the daily and I want to throw on something. If I'm like, all right, do I need to take profit? Do I need to DCA in? Do I need to DCA out? What's the best, most logical move here if I'm looking to take profit or to realize gains? Uh, mm -hmm. So I throw on the easy bands from Sistine Research. And this makes it about as simple as it pretty much gets. Forces come on here. So you have... Uh, green and red easy bands. Green easy bands means it is a great buying zone between the dashed and the solid line. Uh, the yellow line is a 21 day moving out or a 21 week moving average. And the red easy bands, uh, anytime you get into these red easy bands, you typically want to DCA out. So in the green easy bands, DCA in. Outside of the green easy bands, in between the red and the green, you stay still and you DCA out once we get into the red easy band. Well, guess what, guys? Uh, not saying this is what you should do, but we are currently sitting above the red dashed easy band. Uh, Rob, in the current conditions, if uh, if let's say you bought Gala, you were st let's say let's say you followed you followed this rule, right? You start DCAing in right here. Okay, a penny, two pennies, two pennies, two pennies. You stop DCAing at okay. two point three pennies, and now you're mm -hmm. at five cents. Are you going to start DCAing out? Should you start DCAing out? I mean, it all depends on your time horizon and your objective, right? Um, so for me, I have two base scenarios that I go into crypto uh, investing, and it's uh, short-term trades and long-term hodls. So uh, I have Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano. Those are my, uh, my long-term. And then from there, I have things I get in and out of in trading. Uh, now... Also, you might want to consider like, what are you going to be eyeballing for the next bull market? And those you should just be looking for a good entry point that would be a, say, a two year hold. And so I have, so I have Bitcoin. I'm not going to sell it even, uh, I'm not going to liquidate all my Bitcoin on the next bull market run. I might take some profits and my DCA out a little bit, but essentially I do have uh, Bitcoin set aside. Uh, for the long term and in my long term vision, regardless of what happens in the price action, who know you never know, man. Maybe maybe we don't get a, another bull run followed by a bear market. Maybe we just get a bull run. Uh, I mean, you can look at the S and P five hundred. 
uh, you know, that thing rallied for 10 years. <laughs> and so there's nothing, there's nothing to say that it's impossible for Bitcoin to rally for 10 years. It, 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 you know, if you had global adoption, nation state adoption, that is something that's on the table. So I don't, I don't subscribe <clears throat> to the idea of no matter what, you have to DCA at, during a bull run because you know you don't know what what's going to happen. That said, your boy be DJing, I be I be getting in and out. And right now, if I got into a gala and I was looking just to make some money, I would probably be selling right now. I would probably be, you know, a five X. That's good, man. Two thousand bucks. That's ten grand. A five X in a bear market, guys. Yeah. Listen, if if that's, you have a substantial amount of money and yeah. and you can realize some gains, and whether you whatever you do with those gains is up to you. But if you want to wait, yeah. But and buy back in at three cents, three and a half cents. Here's the thing, you know, you're kind of setting up the scenario like I got in at a penny. Now, if I would have been buying it at twenty cents, fifty cents, right, that's different. You know, fifteen cents. You know, I know I wouldn't be selling at a loss. I do believe Gala and the long term vision. Uh, so it just kind of depends on your situation, more or less. But uh, given the situation you kind of lined up for me, bought at a penny, if I'm on that short-term time horizon, sure. Uh, if I'm looking to hodl all the way for two years, then why stop now, right? Yeah. Because five cents is not the is not no. the, the top for until the next bull run. Not even so, close. You know what? If you were DCA, Dallas got yeah, big if you were piling in at a penny and you're still piling in at five cents, hey, when it's at 80 cents, yeah, are you really going to be like, damn, Shouldn't have, uh, should have, uh, stopped, well, should have yeah. stopped at seven cents. Like, what do you mean? Like, come on. Um, you know, I had an interesting conversation. Uh, I wanted to, uh, to bring up, oh, it was in, in regards to crypto and somebody put an interesting perspective. I know we look at, uh, price history and we look at entry points and, you know, uh, I was talking to somebody that were they're, you know, more or less, uh, very strong on Bitcoin. I, I wouldn't say Bitcoin maxi, but very strong on the on Bitcoin and and kind of investment strategies. He was kind of bringing up the fact. He's like, hey, "Look, man. He's like, look. Bitcoin's at six, when Bitcoin was at sixteen thousand. He's like, he's like, don't forget just the DCAN. When Bitcoin was at sixteen thousand, if you would have been buying Bitcoin every week, and the, the thing is, it doesn't change now. So the, the, the idea is the DCA say once a week you buy some Bitcoin. If you're buying Bitcoin when it's at sixteen thousand. You, you bought $160 worth of Bitcoin every week, you're buying 0 0.01 Bitcoin every week. At the end of 10 weeks, you have 0 0.1 Bitcoin, 10% of a Bitcoin. So in just 10 weeks, the span of two months, you could accumulate 10% of a Bitcoin. And how much would that be worth now? 16,000 versus 20, you know, versus uh, 21,000? You know, you just took, you know, your investment is 16,000. You just increased it by like 20, you know, 25%. And so for doing what? Doing nothing besides just purchasing and hodling. So, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, doing we nothing, can sit here man. and talk about like entry and exit points, but you know what? If you're, a, if you have strong conviction in the space, which I'm sure you do, if you're sitting here watching this, uh, then, you know, <laughs> don't forget just to set a little aside to DCA, even if it's 50 bucks, it's 20 bucks, it's $10. Because right now we're early and that DCA, you set that aside and you look out five, 10 years, every $10, every $50 is going to be multiplied by 10, by 30, by a hundred. Uh, yeah, so let's, let's not lose sight on that. Um, and then a uh, little, little love to Hold the on, I want to give an update. Yeah. What's up? So the Tanya, she was the one with the baby Tanya, right? Lucas. The She's confirmed. She does have an epidural on her back. She is about to go into labor, and she is watching our show, and the baby's name will be Lucas. I swear to God. Unless she's lying. <laughs> Unless she's lying. Who lies which, on the internet? I've never met a Tanya that lies. So, Tanya, I wish you nothing but a fast and painless delivery. And uh, for you, Tanya? Hola! <laughs> when Lucas is born, if we're on air, we'd love to give Lucas a hola as well. <laughs> Oh, man, That's Lucas. right. Send us, send us some baby photos. We love baby photos. Uh, a little love to the chat, though. Uh, we got Good Sprinks, uh, Mr. Young Fargo, Into the Cosmos, Mr. Kennedy, Omar, Sam S., Crypto Trends, Anton, Mimi, Eyes of Lazar. Uh, we have Doyle, Turpentine, Hefe, and Justin Ubanks. To all of you, hola! Welcome. Sin City Crypto. What about my friend Butterball, who said you guys deserve more views? Top show. Thank you, my friend. Butterball Me. and also uh, Burke 3 in here. Yes. Uh, and uh, we're getting closer to that club limit. 10 away. 
Also, Magic is in here. Guys, if you're not sub to Magic or you don't follow him, do yourself a favor. The guy is top notch. Uh, he comes on our show. We want to bring him on a little more frequently because we do appreciate his analysis. So go support Magic if you mm -hmm. haven't already. That's right. Robin, I have some macro information to share with you. Not good. The first one that's of grave concern, uh, we actually tweeted this uh, on our Twitter page. So guys, if you are not following us on Twitter, please help us out at Sin City Crypto one Yes, we did play, pay for the blue check mark. We just had some extra money that we had no idea wanted to do with, and so we decided to splurge on Twitter. Um, so Watcher Guru tweeted this, um, tweeted this today. Saudi Arabia says they are open to settling trade in currencies other than the United States dollar. We've been talking about countries like Russia, China, India, pushing other countries, especially the Gulf countries, the people that produce and, and uh, you know, essentially are the oil hubs of the world to get off the petrodollar. And so for the kingdom of Saudi Arabia to come out and said they are open to settling trade in any, and other than the U.S. dollar, uh, guys, this is of grave concern. And and I uh, forget who it was in here. Was it was it magic or someone came on and said, if you're cheering for the demise of the dollar, uh, you got something else coming. And I, and I tend to agree. Let me tell you something, especially here in the not just the U.S., but across the world. If the U.S. dollar, let's just say we're at 60 percent of countries holding of the U.S. dollar being held on the country's balance sheets, that number drops to under 50 percent, 45 percent. There is going to be complete pandemonium, not just here in the U.S., but across the globe as well. Uh, this is, I mean, I'm not going to ask you, is this concerning? Because I'm pretty sure this is concerning, correct? Uh, yes. Now, it's, I still think it's a pipe dream, at least in the short term. Now, could they be moving away from the dollar as far as the means for trade in the future? Could they be setting up the infrastructure? I think it's happening. I think it's real. But I don't think it's anything that's coming within the next two, three years. I just think there's so much dependency on the dollar. It is, it is the way traded. Here's the thing: like Saudi Arabia is not going to not sell oil because somebody's going to pay in dollars. You know what I mean? Like I don't think they're going to they're going to significantly pull back how much money they make because Brazil wants to pay in dollars or only means for Brazil to pay in dollars or is to pay in dollars. I don't think they're going to be like you know what we're not going to sell you any oil. We're going to lose billions of dollars in doing so. Now. They could be setting up the infrastructure so that way they can message Brazil and be like, or, you know, have talks with Brazil. But like, look, you know, we're going to move away from the dollar. This is what we're building. This is how you're going to plug into the network. This is how we're going to move away from it. Uh, but those things take time. Infrastructure takes time. You want to build a highway. It does not pop up really quickly. You know, infrastructure. You want to you run power lines. Those things don't just pop up. You know, the same thing. Infrastructure in finance and economics. Similar thing. Now, China's you have, working on that digital yuan, man. You now you can blow things up in the same way that you can have a bridge collapse, <laughs> like or a you know pipeline. What I mean? Yeah, you can have a pipeline blow up. You know, you can destroy infrastructure pretty quickly. Uh, but uh, to build a new one to have something that operates on a global scale that takes time. Um, yeah, so, Forrest yeah. and Forrest covered. Uh, um, I believe it was Russia and Iran are, are doing a, a gold backed dollar or gold backed stable coin. But also, you had Janet Yellen come out and say, if the debt, debt ceiling is not raised, the U.S. will default. The U.S. will default. Yeah, and so... They will. They will raise it. No, no. I know they'll raise it. I'm just saying. Uh, yeah. They're uh, sounding the alarm. If, if the U.S. dollar starts to lose dominance, it's going to wreck complete havoc in the Treasury's market. You're going to have the Fed have to come in and start printing money again to put those Treasury securities on their balance sheet. What would that do for inflation? What would that do for jobs? Who knows? Uh, no way. Question, David. Are you a fan of paragliding? You ever been paragliding, zip lining? Uh, you, you're afraid of heights? I am. No. Would you ever go paragliding? I got no shame Would you ever go it. paragliding? <laughs> no. That's because you like to hang out Unless on your I was You like to hang out on your Ill. couch and just chill. If I was chill. terminally ill. Okay, what yes. would you rather do? Hang would out you? on your couch <laughs> or go paragliding? <laughs> Which one would you rather do? Paragliding or hang out, hang on, out your on the couch? That video okay. looks fake. Though. All right, here we go. Yeah, boy, I got a video for you. All right, so you can do both now. So here we go. Did I watch you, can, this is wild. you can go paragliding How and hang out on the couch. Dude, wait till the you man see how has high no seatbelt. 
There is no seatbelt on got this. No, uh, no harness, no paw harness, no parachute. This is just the dumbest straight thing I've ever seen. Yolo oh, wait with till the you freaking see, bro. <laughs> Who would do this? Gala holders. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this dude is crazy. Look at this guy. Yo, he puts taking his, his slippers shoes on, off. bro. <laughs> he got his slides on. Look this at is that. literally giving me anxiety. Oh, just wait till this. you see how high he is. Like you can kind of tell next to the mountain. Wait till they show the ocean. Dude got no seatbelt. Just you're chilling not on the surviving couch, bro. this. Look at that. You are not surviving that. Are you he, kidding me? He got a lamp there's out no way there. This is real. It looks got, fake, right? No, that's real, bro. bro this is not real. That is I real. Look, look at that. He lands it, bro. You can't CGI that, bro. I it's thought it was fake too. And, a, and he's got a night lamp. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of here, bro. This is You need the whole setup, man. What if it gets dark? Oh, uh, you got a TV remote over you here. You know how long it's gonna be. Uh, I wonder if so I got... thought that backpack was a parachute at first, but it's not. You just got well, snacks. He's got a, he got a bag of chips there. Yeah. Oh my god, hold on. <laughs> Side story here. Hold on. I was playing video games last night, right? And guys, uh, I just wanna say that I confirmed that's me. So it does video, look like video. Rocco! Dude, I was at the this grocery Rock store. I swear to God, I, I thought it was Rocco. I that walked up Rocco. and tapped the dude hey, on the Hey, the video is real. The video is real. Uh, I was playing like video games last night, and uh, you know, everybody wears a he the headset. Mm -hmm. I hear some dude straight crunching in my ear. Like, I'm like, bro, what are you eating? And he was all like, potato chips. I'm like, what kind of potato chips? He's like, Plain. I'm like, yeah, you're pretty basic, bro. He's like, well, no. He's like, I got some uh, Greek yogurt on the side. I was like, stop. My dude. <laughs> My dude. And he was like, it's like a Mediterranean thing. I was like, oh, no, it hard, is. Bro. It did. I was it's like, fun. you ever do Doritos and yogurt? He's like, yeah. Doritos, Cool Ranch, and Faye oh yogurt, God. bro. I'm telling you, game changer. Yeah. Um, all right. I got one more macro story to go, to go over. Uh, so Pakistan. So we saw what happened with Sri Lanka. Uh, their country went bankrupt. People started storming the, not sure what you call it, but where the you know, president, whatever, lives. And now there is another country that is teetering on the brink of default, and that is Pakistan. Pakistan says forex reserves are not enough to cover even a month of imports. Um, this is extremely sad for the people in there, guys. If they can't even import stuff that they can't grow in their own country, you're talking about people starving. They're talking about people not having gas. They're talking about people not being able to heat their homes. Uh, over the past several months, Pakistan has faced a crisis similar to Sri Lanka with a weak currency and the highest ever inflation rate. Home to 2.8 million people, India's neighbor is on the verge of bankruptcy amid deep political instability. Talks about devastating floods, also uh, compounding global economic turmoil from the Ukraine war. Faltering GDP growth has made it difficult for Pakistan to service debt of $274 billion dollars which was nearly 79% of their complete GDP as of September of last year. Now, um, <clears throat> how does this affect the global economy? Well, here are the top 10 Pakistan exports. This is what they export. Uh, a lot of it's clothing, cotton, copper, cereals, salt, right? Their number one being uh, essentially clothing, stuff you make clothing with, cotton. You probably have a shirt that on the back of it says made in Pakistan, right? So these are the exports. So what they are sending out. Now let's talk about what they are bringing in and which countries could be hurt. So uh, again, exports. So what did Pakistan import? Their number one import country, their partner was China. $20 billion worth of imports from China, followed by the UAE, Indonesia, and US coming in at 3.82 billion. You have a country like China, and we know what China's been doing, and Kyler has talked about this as well. Uh, they're essentially giving out loans to countries in Africa to build their infrastructure, but they also have control over that infrastructure and potentially the, the uh, government as a whole. Are they going to step in and do the same for a country like Pakistan? I mean, $20 billion is a lot of money for a country. Uh, I don't know, man. Uh, I don't really have much comment to give to, to this whole thing it's it's pretty straightforward uh do you got anything else to add to this rob no, i think it uh it shows that right now through inflation and kind of the economic situation we're in globally that the strong companies are just battling inflation which is 10 percent, 20 percent, whatever it is five percent wherever you land the the major global powers uh 
are weathering the storm, but the smaller countries, um, the economies that aren't quite as uh, dominant, Do can't can't sustain this, man. And I think this is a first of fall. My concern is that this contagion will spread, say, Saudi Arabia. <coughs> I, I know. Uh, you Saudi Arabia is fine. Yeah, well, I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah, just no, say, I know what you're saying. Say the dominoes keep falling. That's why and, I showed the other, export and the import, so you can see the intertwinedness of uh, the countries. Yeah, and and you know, neighboring countries and, and countries that uh, you know have strong dependencies, as you said, you know, could could eff effectively be you know affected as well. Uh, Do you so, remember we we covered a story a while ago from the I believe it was a global bank or one of them said they wanted. Countries to stop hiking interest rates, especially the U.S., because it harms developing countries and, it's dare I the, say, third world countries. The dollar milkshake theory. That, in, that the currencies will fall and dollar will be the last one? Well, yeah. And mm -hmm. so, like, on the way down, as the dollar is, like, losing its value and we're depreciating, all the other countries that are dependent on us that can't print the currency are going to fail along the way. Yep. It's all them that go down before we do. So what you're saying is the U.S. government's milkshake does not bring all the dollars to the yard. No. Mm. Good one. I like that one. Fair, Fair enough. enough. Uh, I do, do have wanna... a lot of dairy. Where's my sound effects, Rocco? <laughs> I'm give him the woos. Which one did you Don't want? worry about it. It's yeah. too late. Cheers. Uh, uh, if you were watching yesterday's show, um, you know, we did a little story time on, uh, did a little story time on um, my dog, Honey. Hey, and uh, there, the pictures? Was, there was a request. Uh, that dog's by Kyler. farts are the worst. <laughs> there was a request from Kyler for uh, where's the dog photos at? Let's see him. <laughs> and so, uh, without further ado, uh, <laughs> let's Did introduce you. Right? Yesterday, you said you let's gave the dog away, and then they gave you the dog back twice. I gave him away twice. Wow, well, two times. Oh, you're a good dog. <laughs> uh, Mike is the one that got it the sick. Time. There's that's, that's funny. honey right there. Look at honey. Damn, damn. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, that's such a beautiful. Dog. I know what I love. And then that. there's her who had dressed up uh, with a little sweater, little antlers on. Chewy. You know? And then uh, there's uh, that's my dad and my uh, my son, and then honey there with the antlers again. This is <laughs> Taco Dog. Beautiful. And then uh, my favorite uh, when uh, I have nobody to companion me and help me with dinner, I. Uh, Hang out with honey at the dinner table. That she is loves Photoshop. spaghetti. You're such an idiot. No, that's real. That is that's a real. Photoshop. It looks Photoshop. <laughs> that is Photoshop. <laughs> so stupid. Oh man. Uh, wow. No, what is funny? Hey, that, guys, put funny. a one if you put a one <laughs> if you like dogs. <laughs> Doesn't like. Hey, dogs, no, what is funny? You like dogs? Dave, Some people don't dogs. like dogs. <laughs> like Dave dogs. said the the dog fart at the worst. Like uh, Dave is an expert. <laughs> He's like, you know, on a scale of one to ten, uh, ten being, uh, <laughs> how did you know that? You know, Saint Bernard after, uh, <laughs> all right, after meatloaf. All right, let's get into, uh, let's get into the uh, the theme of today's show. Okay, so the title of today's show reads "Bitcoin to 100K." If this happens, top hedge fund exec says we did have a poll. We ended the poll. 145 votes. What will send Bitcoin to 100K? 48% of you said mass adoption. 37% of you said regulation and 14% of you said utility. Well, let's hear what Anthony Scaramucci, what he had to say. This is uh, from the Daily Hodl. Anthony Scaramucci says one catalyst could send Bitcoin flying, predicts 2023 will be a recovery year for crypto. Skybridge Capital Chief Executive Anthony Scaramucci said Bitcoin could go on a massive surge in the next few years. He calls 2023 recovery year, and he predicts greater adoption of Bitcoin to send it to 100K. Greater adoption. So that was what he said. I believe that was the number one answer people gave. He said, you are taking on risk, but you're also believing in Bitcoin adoption. So if we get the adoption right, and I believe we will, this could easily be, excuse me, a fifty to hundred thousand dollar asset over the next two or three years. Robin, where's your vote? Is your vote mass adoption regulation or is it uh, utility? Uh, utility. What do we need to see for Bitcoin to get to hundred thousand dollars? I still, I, I will always harp on the biggest catalyst, which would be nation states uh treasury assets uh, i don't i don't see anybody talking about it i don't i don't understand <laughs> like it makes it makes sense right in the same way we talk about portfolios why don't you just allocate five percent why don't you just allocate one percent why don't you allocate we always talk about that as far as a portfolio for 
wealthy individuals, right? Or just anybody just trying to secure their future, right? To allocate something to Bitcoin. At some point, we've seen El Salvador do it, but at some point, a giant company, a powerhouse, one of these top nations, they're going to start at some point allocating money aside or shifting money away from gold and putting a percentage into crypto. And when you're talking about entire nations, you know, when you talk about nations and, you know, treasury, like that amount of market cap that they have, the amount of capital they have compared to the, the market cap of Bitcoin, it pales in comparison. Bitcoin's market cap right now is at $400 billion. These top nations, they move trillions. They hold trillions. And, you know, all you need is 0.5% Bitcoin's of a major actually, nation to buy, you know, put, put, you know what I mean? To take their, their gold. Let's well, just the say Bank of have, International Settlement did come out and they said, uh, 1% is fine. There was also a rule for 2%, but those are for, I forget. I mean, the, what the, happens when France pulls 5% of Bitcoin off the market? Yeah. I mean, just think about it. What happens when Canada moves 3% of Bitcoin off the market? What happens when the U S decides to, pull 2% of Bitcoin off the market. And for the U.S. to do that, to pull away that much Bitcoin and hold it in the treasury, you're talking about like 0.0001% of the budget. Like half of what they sent. Yeah, and, and so that day is coming. And when that day comes, you want an answer? When are we going to explode? I think it's coming sooner than later. And I think it's going to be another small country I think it's going to be another El Salvador style country, maybe someone in South A Africa. And then people are going to start, other countries are going to start watching. Be like, hey, man, we just need to hedge ourselves in case they're on to something. We don't want to fall behind. Let's just, to be safe, scoop some up. Well, here's, China does it. U.S. does you know, it. France does it. It's an arms race. You bring and they up, start freaking. Yes. But here's the difference, Robin. Here's, here's the difference. And you bring up such a good point. It is an arms race. If you got countries starting to do it, you're literally, you want to talk about FOMO? You're going to get FOMO on a global level. And here's the difference. In an arms race, you can't run out and create more missiles. You can't run out and create more tanks, more naval ships, more airplanes. But you, you can, actually. Yeah. I was you can. Say, that's what I meant to say. You can <laughs> yeah, do those things. Like, I grew up in Norfolk, Virginia, My man. Bad. We had the world's largest uh, ship. You get in an there, arms man. race, Build you have carriers. the capability to create new weapons, new fleets, or whatever. What you cannot do is you cannot create more Bitcoin. Hold on. You know what you can create, though? You can create all-time new viewership from the, in the short term. When we cross <laughs> we cross big milestones. We are 270 viewers. All-time and new viewerships in the short term. That uh, makes zero sense. All-time new viewership in the short term. You know, how long has it been? You know, it, it, there is a correlation between our viewers and... The Crypto Fear and Greed Index, apparently, because Crypto Fear and Greed Index is at uh, levels we haven't seen since uh, April. You see the five, and, uh, five euro chat? We, we are. Oh, yeah. So, uh, we're not opening up the club yet. First, we are opening up the damn club. Gonna, I'm excited. I got my club shirt on and everything. Man. For what? I'm and, in line. And uh, I also, get, Kazuma yes. says the only mass adoption for Bitcoin to reach oh, 100K will be uh, patient spot trading. Oh, okay. Okay. And leverage trading ban. Mm, leverage trading ban. Interesting perspective. That is but. interesting. Uh, but without further ado, there are a couple of things we do here very well in uh, the city of Las Vegas. One, a cryptocurrency uh, TV show we uh, run live Monday through Friday. Two, we have badass nightclubs. And three, we like to celebrate new milestones. Without further ado, Rocco, <coughs> finger tornado. Let's go. Do not finger tornado. <laughs> I am the finger tornado guy. This is weird, Tyler. <laughs> Calm down, sleepy Joe. Thank you guys for watching, supporting. Thanks for getting us over 270 viewers. We like to celebrate milestones. We like to celebrate growth. There you go. So. And apparently we need to work on a lot more things like our dance moves. And we just lost viewers.
So what I want to go over, all right, so let, let, let's pivot here. Let's pivot. I want to pivot. I want to pivot to CoinFlex. So I was not on the show yesterday. You guys talked about GTX, right? Uh, the new exchange formulated by the co-founders of Three Arrows Capital, who are on the run and who apparently uh, have been subpoenaed over Twitter. You also have the two dudes that essentially tried to uh, create a Ponzi scheme to pay back old investors. Literally the definition of a Ponzi scheme. Hey guys, we're gonna issue a new token <laughs> called uh, Recovery Value UST, and we're gonna use that money to pay back old investors. Literally a Ponzi scheme. And these four idiots decided, hey guys, it'll be a good idea to create a crypto exchange and call it GTX. Well, of course, they did face backlash. And and uh, and through the backlash, that they, blew up quick. That blew up real quick. They <laughs> attempt to hose down at the, over the proposed project sourced from Coin uh, Coin Telegraph. About mounting criticism on social media, crypto investment firm CoinFlex has attempted to clarify its plans to build a new exchange with Three AC. <laughs> CoinFlex said it won't actually be using the GTX name as detailed in their pitch deck, noting that it only serves as a placeholder name. You could have literally picked anything else, but for the placeholder name, you pick GTX. I call complete BS on that. Complete BS on that. Nice try, though. CoinFlex added it would be looking at rebranding itself into the new entity, noting that CoinFlex CEO Mark Lamb and co-founder Sudu Armgumun will remain <laughs> involved in the new entity. CoinFlex okay, said Robin. that... Listen to this. CoinFlex said that any funds raised would be used for operational growth, increasing its equity value for CoinFlex creditors and shareholders. L let me tell you something, guys. These guys do not give two <laughs> shits about you, your money. They do not care. <clears throat> they don't care. I mean, literally, they're saying it, and they think we're too stupid to understand. Uh, this is a complete joke. I pray to God that none of you who are part of our community even oh. have an inkling of a thought to even use it or even download it or even create an account. Please, for the love of God, do not stay away from this. This has BS written all over it. I, I just, it infuriates me that people like Kyle Davies and Suzu and Alex Mashinsky and Do Kwan, they did what they did to our community. They did what they did to the space. And they feel like they can come out into the public again, not only to be vocally active, but to start new projects. Like, that is such, like, it, it infuriates me. We need to, like, you want to talk about canceling people? These are the people that need to be canceled. People who steal your money, who steal my money, don't give two craps, and they think they can just wash and rinse and repeat. It's complete BS to me. Like, I wish I was on the show yesterday to talk about this uh, yesterday, but complete mm -hmm. BS. Complete BS. You ever watch Ed, Ed, Ed and Eddie? Yeah, no. They're just trying to get jawbreakers, bro. They're just... Dude, it's it's like when I first read it, I thought it was a joke. I thought it was a complete joke. And I was like, wait, CoinFlex sounds familiar. Then I did the research and I was like, oh my God, these were the guys that were launching a Ponzi. Well, you know what's gonna happen? Why are you Dave? laughing? You know what is gonna happen, Dave? Oh my God. Why are you laughing? I don't know. Oh my God. Don't. You wanna oh, you know got why a video? I'm oh yes. Play oh. it. Play it. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> Leave it to Robin to. Oh, sorry. This is. I gotta. I gotta play this. <laughs> the Las Vegas slap uh, championship. What is up with that dude's face? Hey, this might. This oh might, no. This might be violence. Look at his now. face. Look at his face. Wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> hey, which who? Which dude. Who are the... Yeah, that's definitely. That's terrible, if yeah, bro. if you're getting into this next project, that's you. Yeah. Like, I, why I does my think, face hurt? I don't, I don't, think don't that's know a good why. Idea, man. The slap championship. <laughs> oh, no. Bad idea. Yeah, I also think it's a bad idea to show it because we might get a thing for violence. Slap, oh, no. slap championship. Get out of here. Uh, it was in we, Las Vegas. We should have all these people uh, from uh, the Make the Scam, like S SBF, to, to, to compete, you know, in, in one of those uh, tournaments. You know, mm. slap championship tournament? Yeah. <laughs> like a, just like the highest holders get to come in and slap them. We just drop them off an island, have a real royal a battle royale. <laughs> <laughs> that I would watch. Uh, all right, let's move on. Let's move on. Uh, so this, uh, this news broke yesterday or two days ago. Uh, the people, the hackers of the Harmony One bridge hack, uh, they moved about 41,000 ETH 
And they had started to convert it into Bitcoin and try to offload it on Binance, Huobi, and I believe OKX. Well, uh, Binance and Huobi, they froze the accounts linked to the, the attack and they recovered 124 Bitcoin. Um, this was from CZ. He said, quote, we detected Harmony One hacker fund movement. They previously tried to launder through Binance and we froze his accounts. This time he used Huobi. We assisted Huobi team to freeze his accounts. They recovered 124 Bitcoin valued at approximately 2.5 million dollars and like i said again this was uh the north korea's lazarus group they had sent forty-one thousand eth uh over the weekend and which 63 million to three different exchange addresses um so this is uh i mean a lot of the like the die hard crypto ethos people say uh exchanges should not get in and decide whose wallet should be frozen and who shouldn't because now you're creating a gray area. And, and you, when, every time you create a gray area, you get people that decide to operate in that gray area. Uh, what are your thoughts on, should, should more exchanges do stuff like this or should they completely stay out, period? No matter what, who, when, where, why? Well, I think <clears throat> if you're gonna be a centralized exchange and you're gonna abide by government rules, then why not, why not be ethical at the same time? You want to circumvent all this is stick to decentralized finance right but if you're gonna play around in decentralized world if you're gonna follow sanction orders by the u.s and by other countries if you're gonna comply with that but yet let hackers that stole 100 million dollars from another project just transact because you're like wait, wait we're decentralized you're not decentralized Hey, this is crypto. This is what we're not supposed to put our hand. No, no, no. Like, if you're gonna play by, if you're gonna, if you're gonna facilitate the apprehension of funds for a government, then why not facilitate the apprehension of funds for your own crypto community, right? And so I'm fine with it. Now I don't want to see this in in DeFi. That I don't want to see. I don't want all of a sudden to see that you know MetaMask is you know put something in the code to comply with something, you know what I mean? Like that, uh, you know, stay in the, but here, here's the thing. You're going to, in centralized finance, in these exchanges, in these DEXs, you're going to facilitate the assistance uh, for the Justice Department and FBI and whoever else, then you might as well throw a uh, crypto community in there that gets taken advantage of. Now, leave Uniswap alone. You leave all the DEXs alone. Leave all that crap alone. Teacher. Leave that crap alone. <laughs> uh, all right. Before I go over this next article, if you are a fan of Solana, you believe, and you don't believe Solana's dead. Solana's coming back. Ooh, Put a one we in do, the We're doing a one and two? Put a one. So one is Solana's alive. Solana's alive. Is, two. Is, is kicking. Solana is dead. There's it is no dead. way Solana's coming back. Solana's dead. One, you believe in Solana. It's coming back. Two, you do not believe in Solana and Solana's dead. I'm curious, man, because it's such a such a hot topic right now. Solana's one and two. Uh, I'm not exactly sure where the chat will side on this. What, what do you think? What do you think the chat's going to side on? You think the I chat's going to be a lot of the chat's going to say? I think it's going to be pretty split, bro. I think Maybe it's so? going to be pretty split. Um, I don't necessarily think Solana's dead. Uh, I think they've, even though the ties to FTX Alameda. My biggest question, though, is what would Solana have gotten to without Alameda intermingling into Solana and manipulating the markets? That is what I'm curious on. Yeah, we're getting a lot of twos. I don't know. We'll see, man. Uh, oh, but if Solana... Yeah, more twos. More twos, yeah. So a lot of people are thinking... Crypto yeah, music, that's the thing. Crypto S music said, says 1.5. S-Doc said uh, <laughs> live but never hitting all-time high again. That That's my whole question, bro, is what would have their all-time high have been if it would have done the organic way or, or maybe not have alameda manipulate the price of the token like they were doing with everything what would that a number have been if that number would have been 100 bucks uh we're talking about a 10x not that ideal if that number would have been in the 200s you're talking about one of the best returns in a top 20 projects that you can get in this bear market might be a good investment not saying what you should do There's but a lot of two you know the ones are coming in at the last second though yeah um what are your thoughts robin will solana die or solana live uh, was there an article with this? There is. Did you already go over it? No. Okay. I was like, did I miss something? Um, I, I think Solana will slowly fade. 
And I think it will have another big run up in the next bull market. I don't think it's gonna, I think it's gonna be outpaced by a lot of the other layer ones, especially ones that uh, are working with institutions that have uh, institutional money and investment. I think those new layer ones, maybe it's Hedera, maybe it's internet computer protocol, uh, maybe it's uh, Avalanche, um, I think those those projects will greatly outperform Solana, but not to say that Solana isn't going to rise. I think Solana, I could see Solana back up to 100 bucks, man. I think I think that's likely. Do I think it'll get it back up to 250? No. I think I think I think 100 between 100 and 180 dollars in the next bull run, I think is viable on the table, probably even likely. And so picking it up now at where it is, if that's your intention. I still think you get bigger returns from the competition in the layer one space in the top 30 tokens that especially have an emphasis on uh, institutions. Well, Robin, maybe this will change your mind. Uh, Sol token goes parabolic as Solana executive discloses ultra bullish 2023 strategy for their eco system. Austin Federa, head of strategy and communications at the Solana Foundation, has hinted at major development for the Solana network in 2023, igniting a major spike in Sol's price after more than three months in the doldrums. He noted that the foundation would focus on reinvesting in the fundamentals to create opportunities for builders in 2023. Um, he said, quote, one of the biggest investments is a second validator client, which is really a second copy of the system that runs the network. That means that if one system goes down, there is a second system that can step in. It would introduce optimizations that allow people to build products and services that are just as efficient as their web to counterparts. Now, people will say, well, why do you need a second client, second validator client? Just make the first one better. Why are you, should there be a plan B of if number one goes down, we got number two to back it up? <laughs> no, that's a serious question. So like a decentralized uh, a, a, network? Okay, I mean, safeguards are a good thing. Now, should safeguards be in place in, in crypto and blockchain? I mean, I guess you could make an argument for both sides. I mean, right? I mean, you can't just easily dismiss it and be like, it's a terrible idea, right? I mean, if it works as it intended and, and it helps scaling and efficiency, and then all the while you have, uh, you know, a net to catch if you fall. I mean, I, this I, mean I know, I know, I know you're, you're kind of leaning like, why would you need this? Right. I, I understand your narrative. But I, I don't want to easily dismiss it as uh, you guys suck kind of thing. No, I no, think, I'm not saying they suck. Yeah, I'm saying, yeah, what but, do you say? Like, is this a net positive or net negative for them? I don't, think it's net, I don't think it's net either. I think it's just, it's an interesting hmm. dynamic where you're, you're doing something that we haven't seen yet. Or at least I haven't. And you're doing it on a major protocol that's in the top 20. And so I'm interesting. I'm, I'm interested to see how this will play out. And maybe this could cause some kind of catastrophic collapse that we were not even aware of. I don't know. When you, when you try new things, especially as big as you are, you're introducing new risks. I'll say that. But I guess, you know, the intention of the, of the upgrade itself is to reduce risk. So I don't know. It, the idea is to reduce downtime, right? Yeah. And like eliminate that from, yeah. if if the network goes down, they have a, a copy of the a copy of the essentially the transactions or whatever, and they can just jump right back in. And I, go, oh, I'll say are. at the current format compared to other layer ones, it is definitely not ideal. You know, it's fast. I, it's ideally, faster than a lot of the layer ones. Yeah, ideally, you would want it. You'd want a scenario where the base layer is indestructible, and it's just you know, I mean, you look at Bitcoin; it doesn't need a net. I mean, you look at Cardano. Uh, at least right now, it appears that they would never need a net. But you know, I mean, I don't know. I think it's a it's an interesting uh, thought there, and uh, interesting to see how that'll play out. Yeah, uh, we'll see. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, whether you believe Solana is dead or alive, there's a lot of money tied into Solana. There's a lot of people in that community, so uh, one can hope. If Solana does get their stuff together, they can they can separate themselves from FTX, Sam, and Alameda, and they could make their layer one better and more dependable because they are, like Carla said, they are fast. They are cheap, right? They were built for 
essentially institutions. Uh, and so if they can get their stuff together, I think Solana can have a great comeback. But there's a lot of ifs and there's a lot of asterisks tied to that. So mm. someone asked Solana or Cardano. Uh, Cardano for me all day long. Um, I know it's a slower project. I'm going to have to you know, keep my money in there for longer uh, before I see a, a massive return. And someone's uh, Ru Rusty Bot says uh, he thinks GTX is going to push Solana to new all-time highs. Stop it. Uh, you know what would be nice? If we could get to 200 likes. We are almost there. So, if guys, if you can support the channel, hit the like button if you haven't hit it yet. Let's see if we can't get the, uh, the likes up to 200. If we do, uh, David will rap for you. Rocco, Yo, you recognize this shirt? Blows, Stop. Stop. Yeah, we haven't hit oh, 200 no. yet. We haven't hit 200 yet. Uh, also, oh, just a bad. little love to the chat real quick. Please don't hit uh, Shout out. We got uh, Val Delicious. We got Alcard, Johnny C, uh, Humir, Burmax, Aria, uh, Antonio Oss, LMP, Ogden, Bruce W, Hoven, RPM, Virtual Reality for me. To all of you, hola! Welcome to the City Crypt. Oh, yeah. Uh, do we have a camera on Cardano? Oh, there it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Rocco got this for me for Christmas. Cardano, baby. We got the Cardano, dude. Stop with the Cardano. I cannot stand people who say Cardano. I can't. I, and, okay, is it HODL or HODL? Except, hey. It's HODL, man. HODL. Stop. George from Cryptos R Us says HODL. Well, I've heard a lot of people say HODL. I am a HODL guy. And also, the man, Jimmy Jimmy, this dude, literally, uh, he probably spends yeah, 30 to 40 bucks. I have a membership. It's because you've... I every single it. show, you this dude spends $30, $40 on memberships. Jimmy, you are the hype man of Sin City. Dude. When you come out to Vegas, bro, we're going to dinner on Sin City Crypto. Happy as you. Um, I will say that uh, I think with the 30 gifted memberships today, I think that'll push us into a new emoji category. So I'm pretty sure uh, I'll have to double check. No promises, but I think we might have unlocked a new emoji. We're giving Kyler an emoji, right? That's the next one. Is that, that the face you want on your emoji? We talked about right it. <laughs> the community wants it. I we will screenshot this and I will use it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I have some other news I want to share. So this one, interesting narrative, right? Uh, on this one. I know this seems pretty bullish, okay? But I have an interesting devil's advocate take on this. Japanese power giant TEPCO explains their crypto mining plans. Uh, Tokyo Electric Power, also known as TEPCO, which is Japan's biggest power provider, has explained how it is planning to make use of surplus renewable electricity to power its Bitcoin and altcoin mining operations. Back in June of 2020, the firm said it was partnering with the trading company Itochu to co-build a blockchain-based surplus power trading platform. TEPCO announced that it expects to do the majority of its mining in rural areas where there is a surplus of renewable energy. The company added that in many cases, this abundance simply goes to waste. This is a quote from, um, from, from a spokesperson from TEPCO. The current situation sees the surplus energy generated by renewable energy sources, quote, thrown away without being used. TEPCO hopes to make full use of this renewable surplus electricity by mining cryptocurrency. Now, initially, you're like, wow, this is amazing. This is great. What's your take, Robin, before I give the flip side of the take? What's your take when you hear that? <clears throat> I don't know. I feel like it's... Uh... Is this net positive or net negative? For the crypto industry. I mean, I think it's, it's definitely positive. The more people okay. that plug into the network, the more people that secure the network, especially if you're already in the power industry, I guess that's probably a better look than to try to build warehouses. Like if you have a surplus of power, you're a power company. Because right now what we're seeing is that miners are going to power companies and saying, hey, I'll buy your surplus power. Starting to shift. Mine stuff to start, the mine, the mine is starting to shift. And now you're getting to a point where the power company's all like, well, we just use this thing, right? And could this become the norm? Could we see every power company starting to subsidize some of their income by using their own energy? And you always talk about like, we always talk about like, hey, Bitcoin, you can just ask the miners to shut down. Well, you know what? A power company can just shut it down. They don't have to ask anybody. I'm like, hey, get a little more juice. <laughs> <laughs> you say that's my my power lever right there. 
Uh, speaking of power lever, we did get over 200. So thanks a lot, guys. Uh, can I get a round of applause? You know what? Today was such a good show. We're not done. I know it's not. I know we're not done. But today was such a good show. I just want to stop real quick. You know, we opened up the club. We delivered a baby on air. Uh, we know what I'm saying. We, we, you did not deliver. In, we are there. We are there. She is streaming this right now with the epidural needle. We are delivering a baby right now. Yeah, we all we and we to got all the women, likes. to all the women that have delivered. Jimmy, babies. Jimmy, out here throwing away a gift, throwing we gift put membership like on our a strip club and right now. Up over twenty one k. Beautiful day, man. Literally well, put I that baby this. on. I our love backs. this damn community, bro. <laughs> love this damn community. This is pretty cool, man. This love has been guys. a lot of fun. It has. You know what else is fun? Um, a lot of things are fun. But going back to the article, here, <laughs> that was I, a I good one. That's amazing. That's so fun. We're getting okay. I uh, swear don't do to it. God, don't Rocco, do don't do it, bro. <laughs> Come on, give him the give him the, the applause. I will destroy you. you. Okay, give me the applause. He is something amazing. Okay. <laughs> it's a great joke. Great Let joke. Let me give my take on this, okay? I will destroy you. Japan. <laughs> what are some positives? Robin mentioned for crypto, plugging into the network, making it more secure. What are some negatives? Maybe make it harder for new miners to plug in. Is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? Make it more centralized. The renewable energy that's being just wasted. Now it's being put to good use. That's great. Bringing more money into the economy of Japan for the people. This is great. Now, what are some negatives? Well, some negatives pertaining to the crypto market is we can assume that let's just say Japan becomes top five in Bitcoin mining, right? Do you think they're going to hold on to their Bitcoin? Or do you think they're going to probably turn around and sell it almost right away? And I understand that, that a majority of these miners sell their Bitcoin over the counter. But some of them do sell it on the open market. Not all of them, maybe a certain percentage, depending on if they can get a better rate somewhere or whatever the case may be. Can this bring massive selling pressure to bitcoin if countries like japan start doing what japan wants to start doing and is that a net negative what are your thoughts on that that uh thing uh i don't know man. we talk about miners selling all the time miners I, capitulating I think, you add countries think they're gonna, they're gonna to that list follow but this isn't the it's not the country Japan. It's their their power company. It is the largest power I, I supplier get in the I entire underst- country. I understand that, but it's not the country Japan. Okay, and at the end of the day, they're doing this as a business decision, and business has profit and loss. It has a number at the bottom that either turns green or red, and you know what? They're going to turn red if they don't sell their their crypto. If they're where are you, you going to put those in the J- Japanese bond market? That's yeah. I I don't know. Wah, I, wah, I, I think wah. I think that I mean, the uh, <laughs> I think I think that you laugh, but yeah, that's a, that's a real deal. Are you paying attention to what they're doing with their yield controls? They're they're spiraling out of control. Yeah. They import all their energy. All that energy comes from. It's not. They don't have nuclear power. All of that. They're on an island. It's all they do, they import. Do have nuclear, the Fukushima plant. Yeah, I think they have. Yeah, that's not around six, anymore. <laughs> yeah, no. And I'm just saying that as an example, they, they did. Yeah, have, but the they bulk of their energy six, comes from imports. Six. Uh, yeah, yeah. The most of it does. They do. I think they have six power plants. I don't know why. I want some like weird nuclear thing. Yeah. What, like, what happens fusion. when fusion comes in? Fusion's going to change still, the game because now we're still, not going to. Still ways away. Yeah, but maybe. It will change things, but it's 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 still at least it'll make t- ten how, years it'll out. make energy basically free. Yeah. But then, then what? Then what happens when anybody can mine Bitcoin to infinity and beyond? Yeah. I yeah. F- a fusion reactor is gonna be. It's basically. It's, coming, it's the technology that the sun uses. You know, it, it's it's how cold fusion. Sun, it's, so it's like the next step after nuclear power. Yeah. It's it's how uh, how the sun powers itself. So I think it's it's obviously the most efficient way. And the biggest source of income, I mean, uh, energy. It doesn't have the uh, the nuclear waste either. So. Exactly. It'll change the game. And it'll, like I said, it'll make power pretty much But free. it's so far away. They started they started developing a nuclear fusion or started researching it back in the 80s. And they have yet to hold fission for longer than like, I think it's like one second. Yeah. Uh, 
So I, I don't they know. They were able to prove yeah. the theory and like yeah. get it working. So it's working, but as far as using it to power a city yet and it be efficient enough, we're so far away from that. It's it's not coming within within the next two Bitcoin cycles. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, you know what is going to be coming in the next two Bitcoin cycles? You've talked about this, Robin. Is uh, AI tokens. Cardano's hyped AI token soars 337% and achieves a Binance Futures listing. The name of this token is AGIX or AGIX, uh, which is Singularity Nets token. Now, a couple things I've highlighted down here. So if artificial intelligence cryptocurrencies, the explosive growth of the Singularity Net token has been paired with the emergence of AI. A particular spike in the price of cryptos from the AI sector came when IT giant Microsoft expressed its willingness to buy the open AI uh, studio for $10 billion. And that's only 50% or 49% of that for $10 billion. Uh, as a reminder, Singularity Net is a platform for creating, distributing, and monetizing AI services. The platform runs on ETH and Cardano networks. And according to the latest plans, it is focused on directly increasing interoperability between the two blockchains. Thus, the interoperability of the AI marketplace cannot be achieved without creating various solutions tied to its native network, Ajax, and Cardano's native token, ADA. Um, you're big on the AI thing. Uh, I'm not as big as you are. Uh, you want to speak to this? You said, uh, I believe and you said on, stupid, on crypto. Man. This is all stupid. I don't care. It, just because it's hold on Cardano on, dude. doesn't, doesn't hold change. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh. You were on... When we did Lifer show, you said, "Oh, AI, AI is tokens a, are the a, next ones." That, no, 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 oh, no, no. Well, AI tokens. You said prices. The, okay, where the price will go and what it is actually used for is two different things. I think that you, you know, you can ask me: Is metaverse tokens a good thing to invest in? Hell yeah! There's gonna be a giant rally. Wait till the uh, wait till the Quest Three comes out and the headset comes on, and there's like these badass DApps that come out for the next uh, Oculus uh when that comes out and everybody has one for for christmas and uh everyone's over here hanging out in social media land and in in their little vr headset and i think you're gonna get a resurgence of metaverse tokens do i believe any of those have any value to the actual metaverse and what this industry will look like no but if you're looking at it from a strictly monetary you know point of view you're trying an investment uh, thesis then sure incorporate those into your investment portfolio what same about can be said with ai ai is going in the same exact boat it there's what what the hell is ai going to do for blockchain it is not it, it's, it's not, not don't ask what ai can do for blockchain but ask what blockchain can do that's for ai that's right that is right <laughs> so what president said that by the way <laughs> <laughs> Herbert Hoover or Eisenberg? Yeah. So, Eisenberg. 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 Now, I will say Eisenberg. in the blockchain space, in the blockchain space, <laughs> one thing to That's keep an up. eye out for is that our fellow traders, our, our analysts, our TA guys, you know how to step your game up because the competition is not the next newest and greatest uh, TA analyst. Your, your competition now is a bot. It's a computer. Straight up. And it can look at years and years and millions and millions of different data points. It can identify trends. I know there's but trading bots. There's trading yes. bots out there now. Yeah. But wait until these AI bots that are developed by Microsoft that have billions of dollars investment behind it, when those things get turned on to the the trading market. And you know what? Now, you can also make an argument that these uh, technical analysis experts can use this AI software to become even more powerful. That could also happen too. Hey, but I will say they will replace. You know what industry will get replaced by AI? Is, Most of them. Yeah, uh, is the book editor, bro. Yeah. The, the book editor, uh, yeah. the now guy when you when uh, you send your book to the publishing company and they like reword it and make it sound all good. That, that job is done. It is literally the same position as the guy at Walgreens that used to develop your photos. 
You remember that guy? Back, <laughs> I'm old. I remember going there. You drop Before off your little thing. reel, and then you know they had a little photo booth. Now the photo booth is just a stand where they have extra snacks and and like the generic batteries <laughs> over there. Like no, you know that that stand still is there. It's the graveyard, but they don't do any photos there anymore. It's just where they have all the extra. Uh, it's like the new That's storage racist. area. That's Actually, racist. the guy's That's in the machine. He's inside the machine. So <laughs> if you are a book editor, you need to switch professions asap because uh, bro, there's so so many five years that's all you got left bro if you don't do something with your hands where you actually have a like a real tangible skill you better really consider how ai is going to take your job away or how you can use mm -hmm. it to better mm -hmm. your job because like you're gonna mm -hmm. it's coming and it's just going to be a blind side bro open ai has invested so much in universal basic income because they're so worried about what's going to happen to everybody everybody like it, if you haven't played with it, I mean, like we've you used it the other day for a thumbnail. You just and it took. Two I had seconds. it literally writing code for our our uh, video uh, or for our video streaming software. I it's was literally he was making commands and it was a language it did not it wasn't familiar with, and so I literally copy and pasted the uh, the PDF file on on scripting. And I pasted it in there and I was like, use this as an example and write me a script and it did it perfectly. And I didn't have to like make it complicated. I was like, yo, switch from this camera to this camera, wait five seconds, lower this volume, and then switch here. You Two gotta, seconds you gotta, wrote it out. You have an entry level job doing any sort of data processing, that's gonna be gone. You mm -hmm. got. Can we, yeah. re can it replace my co host, David? You're so stupid. I'm it's David. It's funny you say that because uh, look what I was working on opening up until it told me that. Um, that they are at capacity, so yeah. uh, still not up there. I was going to ask it, uh, hey, uh, what's a nice way of telling my co-host I don't want to work with them anymore? <laughs> um, but you know what? You brought up, uh, you brought up technical analysis, uh, Robin. And so this is pretty interesting. Uh, BitGet becomes the first centralized exchange to launch copy trading in the spot market. Not the futures, but the spot market. Leading crypto derivative exchange, BitGet announces to, be, uh, announces to be the first exchange to launch copy trading in the spot market. Copy trading provides a good starting port for beginners to shadow their trading portfolio with a more experienced trader and increase their chance of profitability. Also, users are entitled to more transparency and flexibility as the feature discloses detailed info on the trader's ROI, buy and sell time, price, portfolio, P&L records, together with personalized maximum investment, stop loss, and take profit options. The newly launched copy trading feature uh, aims to provide a seamless and convenient experience by giving users the option to copy trading strategies and own the crypto in their wallet. Users can view trader profiles provided by the platform to choose their trader who has uh, the best ROI, their rankings, their portfolios that are recorded in the system. Mm. Followers' trades will be automatically executed with these subscribers' traders' orders after subscription and a profit share percentage. Oh, man. So let's say, for example, you decide to follow, Gar follow Gareth Soloway. Gareth Soloway has a profile on this on BitGet, and you can literally link your wallet and say, copy every single Gareth Soloway trade. Somebody's going to use this for evil, bro. Somebody is going to use this for evil. They're going to have an account that they have all of their thousands of followers that know that will automatically follow their trade and they're going to have an account on the back end that profits from the move and they're going to short or long a position and then do the opposite on their secondary account now i'm i'd like to say the reputable people probably won't dabble with that but if there's a way to cheat the system people will take advantage of it that is the first thing I thought of. I'm like, man, somebody's going to freaking. I mean, I, I'm being a conspiracy theorist here, but, you know, we talk about people who have control. So let's say, uh, let's say a trader has got a massive following and, uh, you know, they're enticed to it gives a, put an order in that they know. I mean, I don't know. It gives a lot of power. I mean, it, it'll give a lot of, um, a lot more power to content creators that, that have the, the, the trading channel that well, here's has the subscription thing. It, models it does, that people it follow does trades. do profit sharing. So if you follow Gareth Soloway's trade and you make money on it, a certain percentage will go to Gareth Soloway. And so, you know, I, I'm curious, magic internet money, you're a trader. Uh, 
How would you, how do you feel about this? Well, is this a second revenue stream for you as a trader? If you can just throw all your, all your trades on there, your portfolio, your ROI, your numbers, and let people copy your trade. Would, would you feel comfortable? Would you, would you feel comfortable magic on top of that? Cause it opens a new you're... revenue stream for you because now if you're right, not only are you, you're right, making money on your own trade, but all the people that followed you. And they made money. You get a certain percent kickback on their money. You know, too. a lot of disclaimers are like, "Hey, don't don't follow my trades." You know, this isn't financial advice. You know, you're kind of stepping into a gray area too by saying, "Hey, I'm I'm," because basically what you're doing is you're you know we we, we were uh, bashing somebody before that was a creator that was what? taking money from their users and and investing it and trading it. Oh yes, yes. And we were like, dude, that is so unethical. And it kind of brings back, it brings up the same situation. If you're in control of your community's money and trades, I, I don't know, man. I, I think it's, I just look at the negatives, man. I look at the negatives more than anything, especially when, when it comes to your community. And I don't want to put our community in any, but does any that, kind of... But does that dull it down? I mean, isn't the whole part of, like, you want but, to learn and but understand... Don't, but or... don't you see us covering an article in the future where somebody just straight took advantage of their community and then we're sitting here like why would you blah 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 like how could you let this happen and i'm just saying that it's like magic, magic said having been doxxed and robbed before jesus christ i do not like to disclose my capital anymore however it's an interesting proposition in theory everyone wins that is true uh it's yeah, it's a lot of risks it is interesting also a couple shout outs crypto billy did give us a ten dollar super chat earlier so big thank you to you crypto billy uh, he said, Billy has to join the fun. Love you guys. We love you too, my friend. Then, One uh, of our whale members. Thank you. We actually had somebody join the, uh, oh no, there's a member for two months. So, Jefe. Jefe. Thank you. Pasa, Jefe. Mucho Thanks gusto. for uh, being a member for two months. Appreciate it. Robin Dave's homework tonight. There will be a test tomorrow. I don't like tests. Mm. Yeah. Um, actually, I was really good at, actually, I lied. What am I saying? I love taking tests. I was, dude, I was a nerd, bro. Every, like when I got hired for a restaurant one time, Everyone Whoa. figured out that I was the smartest guy, the the smartest guy. Take, I was number one on the test. And so when it came time for the, all the pop quizzes, everyone would sit next to me. And I'm so pretty I, sure. I feel like you're the guy that would started. get the inside information. Man. What? Use it to your advantage. If I like you, I will also share that use inside information <laughs> with you. But, you know, there's all a right. reason you never got that inside info, Robin. <laughs> all, right. Um, a storm, all right. A storm is coming? Uh, High pressure, low pressure? What? What was that? It was the, the good thing, the good one. You, you, want, you, want, you, say, you, make, a, you make a joke. All right. I make a joke, a joke. Okay, uh, so uh, guys, we are done. Bitcoin has not rallied. It's at 21,300. Uh, you know what has rallied? Our viewership has rallied. So mm. if you are new here, mm. come back tomorrow. We will be joined by a guest tomorrow. Won't tell you, but it's a guest. Also, if you're a Gala fan, you're going to want to come back Thursday as well. Um, also, we're gonna pin on the after the live. If, if yes. you have any question about the gala, so we can pin in there. So yes, we can leave some uh, question in there. See, see what see. Rocco said. See. Um, also, check out our merch store. There's tons of new merch on there all the time. Uh, not only Sin City merch, but just general crypto Bitcoin merch as well. Go follow us on social media. We are at Sin City Crypto One on Twitter. And the link to everything is in the description. We do have some affiliate links in there as well if you guys want to support the channel. To all the new people, welcome. To all the old people, keep coming back. I don't know what I'm saying. Rocco! Friends, family, friends, and family, and family of friends, we thank you so much for joining us on this beautiful Tuesday. We had an amazing time. We hope you did too. On behalf of myself, Robin, Rocco, and Kyler, we love you. We will see you tomorrow at... 10.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Until then. Bye. See you guys. Kenny, you shut your dirty mouth. I'm sick and tired of you. That's all I got. All right, turn the music down then. Kenny, you hear me? Talking to you, Kenny G. You shut your mouth. You hear me? Stop telling people to boo me, bro. All right? If you ever come to Vegas, man, you just... Yeah. Not in a good way either. You know what I'm saying?
Uh, I just want to give a shout out to Mitchell S, John Foster, Dougie Two, Totoro, Cologne, Austin, Patrick, Adam Barker, D G, D I G I, Next Level, Mark Sazanji, Joyride, Wild Crypto. Hola! Yes. Slap contest between me and Kenny G. I'm down, bro. I just never know what she's doing back there.